This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices fell in volatile trade on Monday, reversing most of the previous session's gains as markets braced for an expected drop in demand because of mass testing for COVID-19 in China, which outweighed ongoing concern over tight supply. Brent crude futures fell $1.79, or 1.7%, to $105.23 by 14.06 GMT after climbing 2.3% on Friday. U.S. West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude futures declined by $2.17, or 2.1%, to $102.62, pairing a 2% gain from Friday. The market was rattled by news that China had discovered its first case of a highly transmissible Omicron subvariant in Shanghai and that new cases had jumped to 63 in the country's largest city from 52 a day earlier. India's oil imports from Russia surged to a record of around 950,000 barrels per day, BPD, in June, accounting for nearly a fifth of overall imports by the world's third largest oil consumer, data provided by trade sources showed. Indian refiners have been snapping up Russian oil sold at hefty discounts to Brent and Middle East staples after some Western companies and countries shunned purchases from Moscow following its invasion of Ukraine on February 24. India shipped in about 4.8 million barrels of oil per day of oil in June, down 3.8% from May but about 23% higher than a year earlier, the data showed. Last year, India's oil imports were low as fuel demand was hit by a second deadly coronavirus wave. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Western energy majors will cut output and lose billions of dollars if Russia, as is feared, suspends a pipeline that is almost the only export route for oil from landlocked Kazakhstan, company sources, traders and analysts say. The closure of the CPC pipeline that carries oil from Kazakhstan to the Black Sea Russian export terminal in the port of Novorossiysk would shut in more than 1% of global oil supply, exacerbating what is already the most severe energy crunch since the Arab oil embargo in the 1970s. The pipeline, which runs through Russian territory and is owned by a consortium of Western, Asian, Russian and Kazakh companies, has been in the spotlight since Russia on February 24 invaded Ukraine in what Moscow calls a special military operation. India's coal imports hit a record high in June despite high global prices, data from three trade sources and Refinitiv ship tracking showed, as economic activity picked up and amid a domestic shortage of the fuel. India imported over 25 million tons of thermal coal and coking coal in June, rising by over a third compared with the same period last year, data from consultancies Coleman and Kepler, and Trader I Energy Natural Resources showed. Imports of thermal coal used mainly in electricity generation, jumped to 19.6 million tons, while shipments of coking coal, used in steelmaking, rose to about 5.4 million tons, Coalmint and iEnergy data showed. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Benchmark iron ore prices in Asia fell on Monday on growing fears of weakening demand for the raw material in top steel producer China, where multiple cities are enforcing fresh COVID-19 curbs. The most traded iron ore, for September delivery, on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trade 3.3% lower at 741 yuan, $110.37, a ton, after earlier touching 722 yuan, its lowest since July 6. On the Singapore Exchange, the steelmaking ingredients front-month August contract slumped up to 4.8% to $107.45 a ton. Copper prices fell on Monday as worries about demand in top consumer China due to new coronavirus restrictions, and elsewhere because of interest rate rises, were reinforced by the soaring dollar. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, was down 3.1% to $7,559 a tonne by 13.50 GMT. Prices of the metal used widely in the power and construction industries have dropped more than 40% since peaking at $10,845 a tonne in March. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Russian wheat exports are expected to remain muted in July despite lower export tax, a massive crop and a weakening ruble as problems with logistics and trade finance caused by Western sanctions persist. The world's largest wheat exporter is expected to have record amounts of the crop available to supply abroad in the July to June marketing season, and reduced grain export taxes sharply on July 1 to support shipments. The IKAR Agriculture Consultancy said on Monday that it downgraded its forecast for Russia's July wheat exports to 1.7 to 2.0 million tonnes from the previously expected 2.0 to 2.3 million tonnes. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.